All right, folks, this is Gimbal Basics in 10 minutes. So if you want to learn how to use a gimbal properly, I will take you through the five phases any beginner comes across when using a gimbal for the first time. This is a full beginner guide right from opening the box to getting set up and being able to shoot some dope content with your new gimbal. I won't be able to show you everything today, but I will be able to get you 80% of the way so you have a core foundation and a basic understanding of how a gimbal works. So here we go. Alright, so as I said, Gimbal Basics in 10 minutes, but first, this has been a huge week because two major milestones has been hit this week and the first one was 1 million views and the next one was this. We turned to 10,000 subscribers on this channel and I'm very blessed and thanks for all the support you guys give me out there. and. Yeah, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So I'm blessed and thank you for being here. It means a lot. And of course, if this is the first time you're here, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. All right, let's get into the video. And the first one you're gonna take a look at is opening the box. So phase one is understanding what's in the box and what all your things does. So what you do, you open up the box and here you say, hmm, what is all this? And it can be a bit confusing, but it's not. Right here in the middle is the gimbal, that is the main part. Then you have a tripod, you got batteries and you probably will also have a charger. And then there's an extension plate. This comes with most gimbals because then you can raise your camera if you've got a hefty lens on. And then of course the base plate to mount the camera to it. And lastly, there will probably be a box with some extra cables uh, and some of these smaller accessories like screws and, and, and things like that. So this is the basic things that you'll get when you'll buy a new gimbal. And it's normally displayed like this, no matter what gimbal you use. And the first thing you do when you've opened up the box is that you'll take the batteries out and you put them into the charger. So the second phase is how do we put this thing together? So the first thing we do is that we'll take the gimbal out and you will also grab the tripod legs and we mount that to the bottom of the gimbal so that we can set it down onto the table. Oof, there we go. So the next thing you do is that you grab the batteries that you've charged and you pop them into the gimbal. On the Weeble S, they're down here. I've already done that. If you have a gimbal that doesn't have batteries that you can swap out, you probably have to charge the gimbal directly with the cable that comes with it. But either way, charge it so that you're ready to shoot. So now that you have it here, um, the next thing is you wanna open up the gimbal and set it like this. And this is where the interesting things happen. This is where you wanna turn on the gimbal. You say, hmm, should I just try to turn it on? Do I really need the camera on there? And then people turn on the gimbal and it freaks out. So don't do that. If you wanna turn on your gimbal, you have to hold on to it, um, but don't do it. It's not necessary and will damage your gimbal in the long run. You need your camera on there and you need it balanced before you turn on the gimbal. All right, the next thing we are going to grab is of course a camera right here, GH5, and then the base plate where we are going to mount the camera onto. As you can see, I've already mounted a, uh, a quick release plate instead of mounting the camera directly on the base plate. And to do that because I don't wanna use these extension plates uh, which you can mount onto the camera so that you will uh, raise the camera up so that there's space for larger lenses. Instead, I use a quick release plate so that I can easily take my camera on and off. There we go. And switch it out with other accessories where I'll use my camera with. So if you don't use a quick release plate or the extension plate, just mount the base plate directly to the camera. So let's pop this one on again. 
and then you just slide this one on the base plate and lock it into place. So now we're ready to balance the gimbal. Moving on to the third phase, and this is the balancing part, and this is the crucial thing. This is the one that you're gonna get right, and having a properly balanced gimbal will give you the best performance. So practice this, make sure you have a nicely balanced gimbal. But let me show you what the axis does and what the motors are doing. So the first motor we have here is the pan motor. This is the one down here. This one goes left to right. On the back here, you will find the roll motor. This one goes side to side. And on the other side here, we have the tilt motor right there. This one goes up and down. So these are the three motors on the gimbal that you want to balance and they are also referred to as axes. So let me just balance this gimbal so you can see how it is done. I won't do a step-by-step -step guide because I've already done that video. Uh, I will link it down here so you can go back and watch this video if you couldn't uh, balance it after watching this. So the first thing you do is that you start from the top and then you work your way down. So the first thing you wanna do is that we wanna slide the base plate forward backwards. So open the tilt motor and then try to get this balanced. There we go. You see we are swaying like a pendle. This means that we have to move the tilt motor up here, you see, until it is balanced there. Move this down. Quite good there. So we lock this and then we work on the roll motor. On roll motor, you slide the base plate here to the side. And there we go. This one is balanced. And then there's the, the, uh, the pan motor. And there's two ways of doing this. The easiest one is just open it and then point it 45 degrees. See it rolls to the side. Let's shift this forward. And if it stays, it is probably balanced. And it did. So now we can open all the motors and turn on the gimbal. All right, so as I said, if this wasn't enough, go back and watch the uh, other video, how to balance a gimbal properly, and I will promise you, you will get it right. Let's move on to the next phase. The next phase is turning on the gimbal and being ready to shoot. We have balanced the gimbal, ready to turn it on. Yes. So we've turned on the gimbal, and what you wanna do now is that you want to auto-tune the gimbal. So if we just turn this around, uh, go into the settings, find motor, and then say auto-tune, then the gimbal will auto-correct the um, amount of weight on the gimbal to the motors so that it will use the right amount of force when, when operating the gimbal. You can also go into the settings right here, go down here to add motor, and then go to custom, and then you can customize the settings uh, to your needs. I always do this because I want as much power going to the motors as I possibly can get. But if you don't wanna mess with this, just auto-tune it and you're good. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna go down to your settings. Here you go, it's on advanced. And then there's some speed, smooth settings and dead band. I also customize those and I won't go into depth of how these are set, but if you want my custom settings and work from there, you can go down the description, find those, download them, and start from there. My settings will make the gimbal much more smooth and easier to work with. Phase five is shooting with the gimbal for the first time. And that is the fun thing and the thing you've been waiting for. And what now? You have the gimbal and you take it out and you shoot some content and you come back in and you look at it and you say, hmm, why doesn't it look that good as what I see online? Why is, why is the up and down movement? Why isn't it as buttery smooth as what I've seen other creators do? And this is because you need to practice your moves. You need to learn how to properly use a gimbal. And this is a learning curve 
that takes a long time to become a great gimbal operator. So there's a couple of things that I would add to this gimbal uh, when shooting it with it for the first time. And the first thing is you wanna hold the gimbal with two hands, not with one hand. So if you have a handle down here and a, and a grip here, use two hands and then have a wide shoulder posture, not a narrow one because then you will be walking down. So a wide shoulder posture so you have a lot of space um, to, to maneuver the gimbal and you will have more control over the gimbal's movement. So that is the, one of the uh, most important things. And to be able to get better control with your gimbal, a good thing is to add a side handle. Let me just grab one of my other gimbals so you can see that. Here are the RS-C2 with a lot more accessories as you can see. Just move this one over here. We have a side handle which gives me a wider posture and a better control. And then I have this back handle as well, uh, so I can put it into underslung mode or briefcase mode. Depends on what company, company uh, uh, term they use. But again, this accessory here, it also extends out. See? So do I now have a dual handle grip, which I really like. So this is one of the accessories that I recommend you get uh, because this will help you a lot. All right, so the next thing you wanna make sure is that you wanna walk correctly. And this is one of the things you wanna practice the most. And you've probably heard this term before, it's called ninja walk. And I don't like that term actually, because walking like a ninja, yeah, it will damage your knees, your back. You don't wanna be that crumbled over. You wanna be straight up and walk normally and use the heel to toe movement. This will dampen the up and down movement that comes when walking around with the gimbal, this up and down movement. That, we don't want that in the footage because people just get seasick when they see your video. So practice the um, heel to toe and once you master that, you will see you will get a lot better footage than what you had the first day you went out and just walked around with the gimbal trying to point it in, in, every, in every direction. All right, so that's the last phase, and this is kind of how you set up the gimbal. This is the things everybody goes through. Uh, I hope that this helped you a little bit by understanding what this gimbal does and how it works uh, in the full place. I have a ton of videos on my channel here about the Weeble S and also about other gimbals, how to set it up, how to adjust your settings and all that, so you can go back and watch those. I will link some of them down here so you can see them. Uh, and go back and watch them. And of course, if you want to take it to the next level and learn all aspects of working with a gimbal, you can always sign up for my Gimbal Academy. The link is down in the description. All right, guys, that is it. I don't have any more for you. Uh, if this is the first time you're here, remember to subscribe if you want to learn more about filmmaking with motion. And ring the little bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. That is it guys, stay safe and stay creative. And if you can, go out and shoot some dope videos. See you next time, bye.